Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Bivens, and I'm a urologist at Urology Centers of Alabama. We want to thank you for watching this video. We know this is an emotional and difficult time where you're in the process of making some critical decisions about bladder removal and urinary diversion. First, let's talk about the bladder. The purpose of the bladder is to serve as a reservoir for storing and emptying urine. Removal of the bladder, also known as cystectomy, is performed for various reasons, cancer, inflammatory diseases, neurologic disorders, or trauma. A urinary diversion is needed to replace the bladder's function of storage and emptying. There are several options for urinary diversion. The ileal conduit is the gold standard by which other options are measured. It has been used for several decades. And even though in the recent past we have used minimally invasive techniques such as robotics and laparoscopy to accomplish the creation of a cystectomy, it has the same function. Now let's focus on the ileal conduit. The ileal conduit is created by harvesting a small piece of bowel called the ileum. When the bladder is removed, the tubes that drain the urine from the kidney to the bladder have been disconnected and then are reconnected by suture into this piece of intestine. The front end of the ileum is brought out of the skin of the abdomen at the level of the umbilicus or belly button and the urine drains into a bag. This is the most common form of diversion, allowing for the least amount of operative time and is associated with the fewest complications. It also allows the fastest return to normal activity. Patients are usually in the hospital three to five days if the procedure is done robotically and around a week if it's done with an open incision. After patients are discharged and returned home, the ileal conduit is managed by allowing the bag to fill with urine. The bag can then be emptied into the toilet every 46 hours. This is accomplished by simply turning a valve, allowing for easy drainage. The bag itself will be replaced once a week. That process is simple and takes less than five minutes. Before they ever have surgery, they come to see me uh, in pre-op, uh, pre-admission testing, and I meet with them there. I um, explain to them who I am, and then I um, mark them uh, for a site for the ostomy. So the physician has a good uh, area to place the ostomy. This is a what we call a two-piece ostomy system. This is just of one company, but you see we have a bag and then we have a flange that attaches to their skin. So you would remove this out of this. You can prepare this ahead of time and then clean their skin and then I typically go ahead and pop that together so that it's all ready. Take off his other bag that he had on, clean the skin up, peel that off there and apply it right directly over the stoma through that little hole right there. It typically takes between five to ten minutes after they've cleaned up their skin to reapply. Once the bag is placed over that, then the urine can come down into the bag. This is a uh, two-piece system that Mr. Rice has on. Um, there are one-piece systems. This one has a flange that fits on his skin and then the bag that pops on top of. This is an ostomy or a stoma, the pink portion as you see through the bag here. During the day, they can wear it with the valve closed and the cap on it, and then during the night they can hook up to a night drainage bag so that he doesn't have to get up in the middle of the night. During the day, if it's closed off, then they have to empty it when the bag gets about half full. And I usually give them a general, like, four fingers full. The reason why is because it can pull away from the skin from being too heavy. As far as what they can and cannot do, uh, initially they cannot lift anything very heavy, not more than five pounds. But then after that, after the initial period of uh, post-op recovery, they can go swimming, they can work out, they can go traveling, they can uh, go about their daily lives and just as long as they make sure that um, periodically they empty the bag. He was real uncomfortable um, with going in public um, with his uh, urostomy bag, um, afraid that it was going to show through his clothing or that other people would know and other people would notice. And then it, I think his major concern was whether or not it would leak. 
he was he was carrying his little fanny pack with him everywhere. You get this little pack that you put all your extra supplies in, and uh, he would he was going through separation anxiety. He didn't want to let go of that bag. Everywhere we went, he wanted to take that bag with him. But it took us about a month for him to get comfortable with leaving it in the car at least. The bags that we fit them with are not visible. Um, we can actually even give them a beige bag. So it, it, we try to make that patient as comfortable as we can. I'm able to work out every day if I wanted to. Encourage them to know that you know they can't hurt the ostomy. It's very durable. While the site itself looks painful, and that's the thing that I had to get over at first, I was always afraid I was hurting him, but there's really no pain associated with it. We travel, we, uh, we, go, we have a Saturday morning breakfast date that we go on, and we started that tradition several years ago. We still do it. I encourage them to try to be as normal as they can. There, there's not been much of a change in, in the department of our intimacy and our, our affection and our uh, relationship with each other. I have a, a, a bag outside and everything, ostomy, and uh, it's, it's fine, working fine. It has to be changed every, about every four to five days is what we do. And uh, then it's supposed to be emptied, I think, when it's uh, close to a, a, maybe a third to a half full. Uh, but I, you know, I've had no problems with this. I have no problems emptying it, and it's fine, works fine, and takes care of things. And there's been nothing that I can't do. I, I can lift, I can use my tractor, I plow, I hoe, I, I have a what I call a push plow, and uh, I tell people my mule gets tired of that because I'm the mule, but uh, you know, I'd, I've had no restrictions on anything. And I think uh, based on his quality of life prior to this procedure, um, it took a long time to convince him to have the procedure. But when he finally did, I think uh, it made everything so much better for us, so much better. In my practice, I have found um, that it is a really easy process for a patient. If they choose, we can do it through mail order. Um, they can get it in the community. We find that's a little bit difficult, but the mail order process, we um, I write their prescription. I have uh, two or three different mail order companies. We fax it into them and it's then shipped to their house. Insurance, um, typically all insurances will cover at least 80 percent of the bag cost. They do contact the patient and make sure that that patient's, you know, ready for those uh, supplies, but other than that it comes right to their door, which is really nice for them. I hope this video has been informative and will help in your decision. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact the Urology Centers of Alabama at area code 205-930-0920. And thank you.